I'd like to talk about my new brick, Media Query for Blocks. Media Query for Blocks lets you add additional breakpoints to your Blocks website without writing code. It also adds classes that you define to target elements when the media queries are within range. It removes those classes when the media queries are out of range. It also has three detection methods, the viewport width, the parent width, and the device orientation. We'll cover these later in more detail. Let's take a look at multiple breakpoints or multiple media queries on the same page. I've prepared this demo with uh, three different breakpoints and I created three different classes and gave them um, names of colors. So I started with blue and then red. Notice I'm assigning the target headline these different color classes so blue red and green so at these different breakpoints between 0 and 600 pixels wide uh, we'll get a blue color between 601 and 960 pixels we'll get the red color and then anything over 960 pixels wide we will get the um, the green color so here we go. We've got our green color and our red color for those in between. See it change. And our blue color finally for narrow screens or mobile devices. Very easy, very simple, very quick. I mentioned before that the default behavior for media query for blocks is to add the class that you provide here in the class field, add that class to the target element when the media query is within range. So it'll add the class when it's within range, it'll remove the class when it's out of range. Uh, with the inverse behavior, you can add that class when it's outside of range and remove the class when it's inside of range. Really useful if you already have a class on a target element that you want to remove and control. So uh, here the target element is the thumb. We're going to add um, is this thumbnail. We're going to add the class thumb to this thumbnail when the media query is in within range, which is less than 600 uh, pixels, uh, then we'll add the thumb and we'll take a look at that and then we'll take a look at the inverse behavior. So here's the, uh, and there's the wrap of the text. When the query is within range, the class is added and then inverse see now the class is added when the query is out of range. So we get the wrapping of the thumb nail. And then when the class is in range, we get um, we get the inverse. We can create media queries based on the viewport width, which is the browser. Or um, if you're full screen, that would be your monitor. Um, the parent width, which is the parent of the element that you're targeting. So if you're targeting, uh, let's say this icon, then the parent element is the container that this icon would be in. And we can use the width of that container to allow us to control when our queries and, and classes uh, will be added and removed. And then lastly, we have the device orientation setting, which allows us to add and remove these classes based on the orientation of the device. Let's continue with this demo and talk a bit about the device notice. The device notice allows you to show an optional message uh, that you can customize. It temporarily pops up for your uh, visitors uh, on, um, on portrait devices and just lets them know that you have an alternate experience for them in landscape, uh, potentially something that's a better experience for them. Uh, you can customize the message in any way you like. Um, of course, your content is accessible in either um, 
in in either orientation, but sometimes you have an alternate uh, experience uh, that you feel is preferred. Uh, let's take a look at that. Here we're using the Google Chrome uh, emulator to simulate an iPhone, and we're going to rotate the device and take a look. So we get this temporary message. It just says best viewed in landscape, rotate your device, and we can rotate our device and see that we get a different experience. And then we rotate back and we get the same, you know, just three seconds or so that it that it shows. So we can customize the look and feel of the notice as well as the uh, the content. The maximum width of the content on a block site or a bootstrap site by default is 1200 pixels wide, I believe. You can change that number, but that's the default and it works for most um, for most situations. But there's times when you may want to design beyond um, that width for display monitors. Um, but if you go full width, then it continues to go full width regardless of how wide the monitor gets. So the only way to really have control is to add custom classes beyond that. Well, with Media Query for Blocks, you can do that dynamically. And uh, we'll take a look at that here. I'll just um, set up. I have a custom class set up called Welp, and it's a width helper. It just adjusts the width so that it never gets larger than 1600 pixels wide which is wider than the control that you get um, out of the box with uh, blocks or or bootstrap let's take a look here okay so it's set to 1600 pixels wide so now my content goes beyond the width that blocks uh, would provide by default but not beyond that 1600 pixels that I've set. So we've effectively designed for a larger screen and still had some control so that even the largest uh, screens wouldn't um, have edge to edge content, which would basically make it unreadable.